Hello everyone! Uh, after his brilliant loss against Levon Aronian yesterday, Shakriar Mamedyarov decides to grace us with yet another interesting game. And it was really a, a clash of the titans today as uh, Azerbaijan was playing the sole leader Russia. And uh, well, it was quite the battle on all four boards. Uh, but uh, th this is board one and this is Mamedyarov versus Alexander Grishchuk. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, Mamedyarov decided uh, to yet again uh, give us an interesting game. Uh, so Grishchuk has the white pieces and he plays e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5, the Ruy Lopez. Uh, a6, Mamedyarov goes for the Morphy defense, bishop to a4. Uh, d6, uh, Grishchuk castles, bishop to d7. Uh, rook to e1 and uh, this is move 6 and already we have... Uh, an, an interesting move by Mamedyarov. He, he plays g5 and I don't think I've ever seen g5 on move 6 in the Rui Lopez uh, but now that I see it I absolutely love it. I mean of course g5 why not? It's uh, it's spectacular. Uh, so bishop captures on c6, uh, b captures on c6 and the d4. Uh, Mamedyarov now of course pushes the pawn g4, knight to d2 and uh, e captures on d4. So now he's up a pawn, uh, knight to b3, uh, Grishchuk uh, is threatening to capture back the pawn and Mamedyarov plays knight to e7. Uh, protecting the pawn with c5 would only uh, improve white's rapid development after a move like c3 for example. Uh, so after knight to b3, knight to e7 was played and knight captures on d4. Uh, bishop to g7, uh, knight to c3, uh, Mamedyarov castles, we have bishop to g5. And it seems like uh, all the black pieces are really tied down, but here uh, Mamedyarov finds, well, uh, I, I really think it's a great move. Uh, he plays f6 calmly, uh, kicking away that bishop and, uh, well, uh, in the long run, uh, making uh, the f7 square available for the king if needed, so the rooks can come to h8 and g8. Uh, bishop to e3, now queen to, e uh, queen to e8, preparing queen to g6 or h5. Uh, all depending, uh, queen to d3 and now queen to f7. Uh, queen to d2 was played and uh, now queen to g6, not allowing any bishop to h6 ideas. Uh, bishop to f4, uh, we have h5, uh, b4, uh, h4, now a4, and uh, in this position uh, a lot of people would maybe push g3, maybe they would push h3, and uh, pushing h3 would probably be okay, but uh, uh, you don't go into the 2800 club uh, to play okay moves. So Mamedyarov plays the absolute best move. He plays queen to h5. Uh, h3 is coming either way, white can't really stop this. Uh, but by playing queen to h5 first, he's now defending the b5 square. So uh, uh, depriving white of any b5 ideas. Uh, bishop to e3 by Grishchuk and the now h3. Uh, we have knight c to e2, uh, h captures on g2, and knight to f4. Uh, queen to h7, knight f to e6, and already we can see that that knight is occupying a very beautiful square, that e6 square is amazing for the knight, uh, bishop captures, the other knight captures back on e6, and uh, Mamedyarov calmly plays knight to g6. He doesn't mind giving up this f8 rook that's doing really nothing for this amazing knight on e6. And uh, by playing knight to g6, this knight now has ideas of h4 and f3, uh, forking the king and the queen. So knight captures on f8, rook captures on f8, and the bishop to f4. Uh, now, uh, stopping the threat of knight h4 to uh, knight f3 with uh, idea of rook to a3. So the bishop had to move, so the rook can protect f3. Uh, f5, uh, e captures on f5, and now knight to h4. Uh, threatening to capture the f-pawn and also this beautiful fork, knight to f3. Uh, so Grishchuk stops this, uh, rook to a3, and we have queen to uh, queen captures on f5. Uh, now with a double attack on the bishop on f4. Uh, bishop to g5 with an attack on the knight, and knight to f3 with check. Uh, now Grishchuk has to give back the exchange, rook captures, g captures on f3. And, uh, well, you don't have to be a particularly strong player to realize that uh, white, wh white is pretty desperate here. Uh, bishop to h6. Now, uh, white would really like to exchange the dark square bishop to maybe, maybe achieve some sort of a perpetual check. 
uh, queen to d5. Uh, Mamidiaro offers a trade of queens, he's up a pawn, and if the queens come off the board, then then black is practically up a piece because <laughs> the white king and g1 can't really move. Uh, queen to c1 by Grishchuk. He doesn't really want to exchange queens. Like I said, if queen captures on d5, simply c, c captures on d5, and uh, this is... Uh, this is too strong of a position for black. Uh, so after queen d5, queen to c1 uh, by Grishchuk, and now bishop to c3, uh, offering to exchange more material. Grishchuk, of course, declines this with rook to e3. Uh, if he plays bishop captures on f8, then bishop captures on e1, and after queen captures, king captures. Uh, this queen ending, let's call it an ending, because it's really not an ending since this king can't move. Uh, the white queen can never move uh, off of the first rank because uh, any dropping of the queen on the first rank is an immediate checkmate. So this would be too easy for black to play. Uh, so after bishop to c3, rook to e3 was played. Now attacking the bishop. Uh, bishop to d4, again offering a trade of more material. Uh, rook to d3. Now uh, Grishchuk pins uh, Mamidyarov's bishop on d4. Uh, rook to e8, getting out of the harm's way since the bishop was attacking the rook and also preparing a tactic that uh, Grishchuk obviously missed. Uh, c3 was played here. Uh, a more resilient move would be bishop to e3, but uh, even after this move, black is still winning. Uh, but after c3, this allows Mamidyarov to end the game uh, pretty, pretty stylishly. Uh, he plays bishop captures on f2 with check. Uh, the king has no squares, king has to ha capture the bishop, king captures on f2 was played, uh, and now rook to e2 check, and in this position uh, Grishchuk resigned the game. It doesn't matter what black plays, uh, if king to g1, then simply f2 is checkmate, since the queen from d5 is protecting the g2 pawn, uh, and if uh, instead of king to g1, king to g3 is played, uh, well, look at that king on g3. Uh, this required some calculation on Mamedyarov's part, but it, was, it wasn't it was really a problem. Uh, queen captures on d3 uh, was going to be played, and uh, Mamedyarov simply had to calculate that queen to g5 check uh, led to nothing for white. For example, king to f7, and uh, white is pretty much out of options. If queen to h5 check, uh, queen to g6, and uh, all of white's hopes uh, go down the drain, and uh, if instead of queen to h5 check, queen to f4, uh, king to e8, and uh, well, after white tries a couple of more things, uh, e even queen to f8 doesn't really achieve anything. Uh, queen to f8 check, king to d7, and this king will easily find uh, a safe house after king c8 and king to b7. Uh, the king will be safe on b7, and uh, well, then <laughs> moves like uh, g1 queen are coming. So after calculating that this was okay for black, that the queen can't really achieve any sort of a perpetual check, uh, the game was over. Of course, uh, Grishchuk resigned uh, resigned the game uh, after rook to e2 with check. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And it, it was uh, <clears throat> definitely a great day for Azerbaijan as uh, they defeated the sole leader, Russia. Uh, Mamidyarov defeated Grishchuk on the first board. Uh, Rajabo won on the second board, and uh, Rauf Mamedov, who is unstoppable uh, in this uh, European Team Championship, uh, won on board four. So, definitely a great day for Azerbaijan. Uh, there's one more round to go in the European Team Championship, so everything will be decided tomorrow. Uh, I'm very interested to who, who will take, take this championship. Uh, so that's it. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, Jiao Wei Zhang, uh, Charles Bartholomew, an anonymous person, and uh, Norman Harding for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.